What's up, everyone? It's Mr. Flourish, 6ix9ine. The Cheese is Good podcast coming to you from New York City. Um, here for a few days. Um, seeing uh, my daughter play her sport. Um, she's a Division One athlete, but also taking in some shopping. <laughs> you know, I'm taking in some shopping. Um, but I wanted to come with another The Cheese is Good. This is a second episode, um, which is really around sports and lifestyle. There's some things I'm going to talk about the sports world in, in front of the national um, semifinals tonight, uh, the uh, men's Final Four. Talk about last night's women's Final Four, especially that Iowa-UConn um, ending. Um, and then we're going to talk betting lines. What I would do, um, if you all followed the last episode, episode one, which was really a mock test episode, um, what, what do we say? We said uh, Iowa was going to beat UConn, but UConn was going to cover the spread which UConn covered the spread. Um, so if you would have put money on UConn covering the spread, our winning on the parlay, I said you can put, I, I said the parlay was bet Iowa to win, but UConn's going to cover the spread. It's going to be like a literally, literally one two-point game. It's not going to be three and a half, four. Um, so if you if you did that, great. And I said South Carolina's going to blow out NC State. Um, I think the spread was 16. I said they're going to blow them out. They beat them by more than 16. So all three bets were absolutely Right. Um, so, uh, in saying that, pat on my back, um, let me talk about what's going on tonight. We have the national semifinal uh, on the men's, North Carolina State, Purdue. Um, right now, currently, as I look at this, Purdue is nine and a half point favorites. Um, I can definitely see Purdue winning the game. Do I see them covering nine and a half points? I think it's a six point game with. A minute and a half to go. Maybe a minute and a half to two minutes to go. The question is, do they make their free throws or not? That's what, you know, so whether they cover or not, because I think they're going to be up on, up on NC State by six, seven points. With a minute and a half to two minutes to go, that's when State's going to have to foul. You know, if they miss their free throw, State gets back into it, makes it close, has a puncher's chance. Um, I think Purdue wins it. That's, a, that's an interesting Vegas line. I, I wouldn't touch that right now. Um... Let me see here. What else? I do think North Carolina State's um, fair to run ends tonight against Purdue. Then we have Alabama UConn. Um, this is a trick. This is an interesting one because you literally can put low money on a parlay on both the big teams covering their spread. Um, UConn is favored by ten and a half points. I don't think the the, the game is that close, and here's why. Dan Hurley is a great coach for UConn. He has it's, it's almost like the old rules for Coach K of Duke. You give Coach K, when he was coaching at Duke, a full week to prepare. To prepare, right? Um, you're not going to beat Duke when Coach, like Coach K when he had a full week to prepare beat that that UNLV team with Larry Johnson, Stacy Augman, Greg Anthony. That was like everybody was like, oh my gosh. Um, you know, that's, you know, so I think you give Dan Hurley at UConn a full week to prepare. Um, <coughs> I think it could have been closer to, the sp- closer to the spread if it was the second game after a day off. You know, Alabama has nothing to lose. They don't have anything to lose now. Um, but, again, that's my take. Um, you know, there's a couple of games going on tonight in the NBA. Uh, we have the Pistons and the Nets. Um, the Nets are ten and a half point favorites at home. Nets will win that game. Um, 76ers at the Grizzlies. The question on the 76ers at the Grizzlies, Philly's four and a half, 14 and a half points favorites on the road at, at Memphis. The question is going to be, is Embiid playing back-to-back or relatively close games, or are they monitoring Embiid's health? I think that's one of the ones you got to wait right before the tip-off to find out if Embiid is playing or not. Um, you know, they can say he's playing, but then all of a sudden, yeah. Uh, Hawks at the Nuggets. Um, Denver's 11 and a half. Here's the thing. You could take the Hawks with that against the spread because Denver does not have Murray. Uh, I think many more games are closer with Denver lately because Murray's been injured. Um, I think that's the one that you can get you can get over on Vegas. I have to call my guy in Vegas. Um, I'm not going to talk much about baseball until after the first – Baseball is hard for me to really do do spreads and, and what I predict. Um, 
predictive analysis. Um, base, I need the first two and a half to three weeks of the season. Uh, understand rotations, understand who's hot, understand trends, understand if they've done something to the baseball or not. Um, that's all important, very important, as a matter of fact. Um, so, with that being said, I want to talk about last night's, and there's some other things we probably could talk about as well. Um, definitely can talk about the, the NIL stuff, what's going on with that stuff. Um, we can talk about the USA versus Japan, USA won that one. Uh, and the She Believes Cup, but not going to do that. Again, Purdue and UConn are going to win. They're going to meet in the finals. I'll give you my prediction there. But last night's Iowa-UConn game was, I predicted it was going to be just a, a really tight game. Dior boy said I was going to win. I said, you're probably right. I said, but UConn's going to cover the spread. And the spread at the time was three and a half. I think it got down to three. They still covered. Um... UConn did. If you put money on UConn covering the spread, um, so both those bets were right. You know, I think uh, he he uh, won the bet though, but uh, I think I won the I won the other bet tonight. But anyway, um, Caitlin Clark, a really smart player. I think people don't really give her credit for her being as ha- ha- having the high IQ that she has. Uh, they look at, oh, she can pull up from anywhere at half court. You know, you got to guard her 94 feet because you never know. Um, she's the she's a generational talent, a generational shooter. She could be a generational IQ player. She makes really nice passes. She makes really nice pocket passes. Um, you know, it's one of those things that... Uh, I know Ice Cube, he did, Ice Cube offered a five million. That was just for press and public, just to remind people, hey, the big three's around the corner this summer. Um, that's all Ice Cube did. He knew the girl wasn't going to take that. Um, it wasn't going to be for her anyway. But, um, you know, South Carolina's going to beat Iowa in the, in the women's finals. And... I know. I think Clark will probably go in between <clears throat> two, three, four, maybe in the draft. She could go five. I doubt it, but um, I think she's also a generational IQ player. I think she's that. She's that smart, um, and I can't wait to see how she does on the next level. But um, I think Iowa. They, they give it their all against South Carolina in the finals, but I need to see the spread. I don't have the spread on me. Um, actually, let me see if I can if they got it already out there. They already got it out there. Okay, here they go. The spread on Iowa versus South, uh, South Carolina women's finals. South Carolina is, is um, six and a half point favorites. You know, that's where I'm at with it too. <laughs> that's where I'm at with it. Um, if you're gonna go with something, you gotta put some, put some bread down, some money down. You just go with South Carolina to win. Um, I don't mess with the spread. I just go with the money line. Um, what is the total point? I don't see the total points right now. They don't have that, so they probably have it. I'm just not looking in the right place. But um, it's kind of interesting. Um, hockey's back. <laughs> so I'm gonna start talking about hockey in a bit. Um, not this one, not this one, but but another one. But I just wanted to. Um, really also bring up the fact that I'm in New York City. Let's go to the lifestyle of this. It's sports talking is lifestyle. I'm in New York City. Okay, let check this out. I worked on Wall Street for a decade. I worked in and around New York, Manhattan for longer than a decade. I'm used to people being everywhere, the city, the hustle, the bustle. I got here on a Thursday. It's now Saturday. I got here on a Thursday, right? Dang, the people ain't walking around like I don't see the numbers. And so I came here a few months ago, but I went directly to the borough and I looked at Brooklyn. I was in Brooklyn for a meeting, right? And it was, you know, they really built up Brooklyn. They really built up Brooklyn, a lot of commerce, et cetera. I'm like, why does people from Brooklyn really need to go into Manhattan? You know, and then I look at some of the developments that's going on in Harlem, that's going on in Long Island. Uh, especially Harlem Money Development, and 
then right before I left, I went to Harlem to visit a friend. He has a new barbershop. And the block that the barbershop was on was really nice. They built it up, you know, nice restaurants. It wasn't like it used to be. So I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking. There's not, the number of people in and around New York is lower. Think about this, because of twofold. One, they really built up these boroughs real nice and all the development that's been going in, right? Number two, and this is a big one. They used to have a lot of people coming into New York because of uh, working in an office. Remember the, cur the commercial real estate issue in San Francisco and New York? It's worse in San Francisco than in New York City. And I look at some of these buildings, and I'm seeing, and and I was on Thursday and then on Friday, around where I'm standing in the Chelsea district, and there it's there. I'm saying I'm thinking only thirty to thirty five percent of the buildings being used. This commercial real estate is a major issue that's not going to go away until after the presidential election. That's when if you want to know when you short the market. You start the short the stock market after the presidential election because they're throwing everything they can to be reelected at the stock market, period. Um, but I'm not seeing the bodies. I'm not seeing the, the energy. I'm not seeing the, the number of people in and around moving in New York City, moving and grooving and hustling and bustling. And it just it's like because people, was, when they were working from home, they then they have those schedules where, hey, you work from home, what is it, two days a week, three days a week, maybe even four, whatever, and so they're just not in the city because they don't have to pay for these commercial, these leases, right? They say, hey, we out, you know? Um, and then just the boroughs and the development and, and, the, and the communities, um, you know, people just doing a little local thing. They're not having to come into Manhattan. And it, it's just it's just really, it's not the same energy. Um, you know, I take meetings here when I need to, whatever. I'm here on some other, sh other shit right now, but... New York, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's up with y'all, baby. Boo. <laughs> a lot of y'all, New York is moving. Nashville, Tennessee, <clears throat> Florida, the Carolinas, Texas. They getting out of New York, you know. Um, but you know, I, I sort of saw it coming on. I when I was here working on Wall Street, you go to Tenth, right, the Meatpacking District. Go to Tenth, and you would see New York Yankee baseball players. You would see some models. You just see people just in the in the street at the club hours. You know, the club, back then you wanted to, you do the bottle service and get in your spot to eat and groove around nine thirty ten. The masses come in around eleven eleven thirty. You know, around one o'clock, two o'clock. You're trying to get you're trying to get your mix right. Trying to be in the mix right on somebody or something. You know, whatever. Um, nah. Uh, the meatpacking district, there ain't no clubs there. And this has been a few years. There ain't no clubs in the meatpacking district. They, it wasn't. That's what's. It's just a lot of things that ain't. ain't you know, a lot of it, a lot of stuff is going to Vegas. A lot of stuff is going to Miami. Better weather. You know. But um, yeah, I can't. I couldn't live here now like I used to. I used to have a spot here. On it was on Gold Street, right, right near Wall Street, right. Um, I wouldn't have it now. Not in New York City. No, no. I'm in and out of, in and out of here. So anyway, I think um, now let's bring it back in. Back to, I think the Lakers are playing right now, aren't they? Uh, let me see. The Lakers should be playing. I shouldn't be looking at what the hell they're doing, though. But um, I, the, the Lakers, they really need to get the Nuggets in the first round. <laughs> So they can just like use LeBron, what is it, 47 or 48 minutes and try to squeak by, you know, other than that. LeBron will wear down as the playoffs goes goes later. Um, they, they're handling the Cavaliers today at home. Um, the finals, I think, is going to be in the men's college basketball, the men's final four, is going to be UConn versus Purdue. Great matchup. Um, who wins in paint? Um, I personally think that this UConn team is it's a different kind of special. I think they they the hunger for them to go back to back is 
unlike the hunger I've seen in, a, in many years. Um, they play with a chip on their shoulder when they don't really have to. You know, they don't really have to play with a chip on the shoulder, but they do. Um, I think UConn and Purdue face in the finals. I think UConn handles Purdue. Um, I think it'll be, I think one half would be good. Other half would be no. Here's what I think. I think one half of basketball would be tactical. It'd be it be decent, decent half. I think one half, the other half would be some excitement, but reality is set in. That this is a generational, t- two to three year team, generational, and the next coming of the Nate Gre- next great college basketball coach and Dan Hurley. Um, that's my take. Um, if you're looking at the early Sundays, because I probably won't do a podcast in a day, I'm looking at the early NBA matchups on Sunday. Uh, the Houston Rockets against the at the Mavs. Um, I think, <coughs> pardon me. Ooh. I think Houston is uh, throwing in a towel. I think Houston Rockets throwing in a towel. You know, they won on the eleven or twelve games, but then they had a loss somewhere, and then Golden State beat them that one on one. That was a huge one. They need to close the gap. Um, and they're competing with Golden State. I think Houston's throwing in the towel now. Um, it was a great little run. They 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 really realized that Jalen Green can be a a star. Whether he's a superstar, or not, I don't know. Um, they got some decisions to make because of the center coming back, who's all world. Um, early game tomorrow. Because I don't know if I'm going to do a park. Uh, the Cavaliers at the Clippers. This will be the Cavs back to back games. The at L.A. Lakers, they'll lose today at the Lakers. At the Clippers tomorrow, the Clippers are four-and-a-half-point favorites. If Kawhi Leonard, if he, if he plays, the Clippers will win. If he doesn't, the Cavs may get him. I take the Cavs to cover the spread if Kawhi Leonard does not play. Um, and the spread on that game is Clippers, four-and-a-half-point favorites. Heats at the Pacers. This is a no-bet game. Pacers, one-and-a-half-point favorites. I'm not betting that. And then the rest of the games are the evening games. Let me th- see if anything stands out. There's no betting lines right now. Um, a game that does stand out is the Pelicans at the Suns and the Knicks at the Bucks. Um, they'll probably get a lot of action on those two games. Be you can be on the lookout there. Um, I think the Bulls and the Magic is going to be skewed differently. I think Orlando is already fa- favored by seven and a half. Bulls may cover that spread. Um, let's see the Seventy Sixes at the Spurs. Kings at the Nets. I don't care about that one. Jazz at the Warriors. Don't care about that one. Timberwolves at the Timberwolves at the Lakers. Here it is a back to back for the Lakers. I don't think the Timberwolves are playing today on Saturday. No, they're not. So that means LeBron is only going to be effective for two and a half at most three quarters. The Timberwolves are coming in fresh. I like to see what that line is. Um, my gut feeling is the Timberwolves are going to cover the line if if not that what I like win the game, but at least they cover it. I think. I don't think it matters that Cat's not playing. But um, it's the back-to-back for the Lakers. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed Mr. Flourish. This is my I'm, – I'm, I'm actually using Twitch right now, but I'm going to import it over to YouTube and other platforms. Um, but this is my, my little Twitch TV that I'm going to start doing other podcasts and other, um, and other platforms using this little TV with uh, Mr. Flourish. Um, and the podcast, the, the cheese is good. Um, there's a Mr. Flores podcast on YouTube, um, Asher Clan, aka Asher Clan TV, as you see at the top, Asher Clan, A S H E R C L A N. Um, that is the the main YouTube, um, the central hub. Oh, we just went over six hundred thousand subs on that YouTube on Asher Clan TV. Awesome, uh, and the cheese is good as a sports and, and lifestyle podcast that I just started. I have about seventy eight podcasts done and um, already on Asher Clan and YouTube. Um, which is on Mr. Flores podcast where I interview different different people. There's different, multiple people come on, uh, some from the adult star industry, um, some from the some from the influencer industry. Really unique conversations about anything that you wonder and you can imagine. It gets kind of it gets kind of wacky um, <laughs> in a good way, a raunchy right. It, um, there's no whole bars there. The, this one right here, the cheese is good. Is a sports and lifestyle. I think there's a, there's an opportunity for someone just to be real. Um, you don't have to be, you know, I played college basketball. I played basketball in my life as well as I was a three sports star. Um, now I'm a digital AI, you know, um, videographer, um, digital Moogle star, whatever they want to call it, you know, how they call me. But my whole thing is this, people want passionate expertise in under 20 minutes. 
Now, you know, we're about to cross over 20 minutes right now. You got expertise on basketball, NBA, basketball men's college, basketball women's, and we talked about some things in the lifestyle. We talked about New York City today, about the lack of the number of people. If you go back five and 10 years compared to now, the people aren't in the city. I mean, the, the ratio is not the same. Um, and it's missing the energy to me. Um, so that was the lifestyle topic for today. Um, guess what? Next week, I'm going to be going to Chicago. We're going to be doing some live podcasts with some influencers. Definitely some adult um, entertainment stars as well. They, they great conversations. Um, and then we're going to do, we're going to try to get into a sports live one. Um, with one of my Chicago sports guys, if, if, uh, we, if we connect, so that'd be good if we can connect. So, um, all the different podcasts to get some love to cheese is good podcast. Um, Mr. Flores podcast and then the milk candy one. So every podcast can get some love hopefully in Chicago next week. So then it's Saturday, five o'clock, go back, listen to the odds I gave you. I've been right so far. Um, episode two, peace. Mr. Flores.